So I started uh, my personal web page when the web just started back then. I think it was '94, mm -hmm. and I've always kept a diary of some kind on the net. And then um, I think it was 2002. Um, I was looking at blogging tools as an easier way to update my homepage, mm -hmm. and so I didn't really understand it that much. I knew about it, and so I changed to uh, Movable Type, which is a blogging software that I later invested in the company. As the blog becomes more popular, um, on the one hand you get more influence, mm -hmm. but on the other hand you have to be much more careful about what you say because you, you're. Uh, if I write about, like I wrote about Diet Coke, and is this good for you? Um, well, I'm, I think, rank three or four in the results when you search for Diet Coke. So with that, what happens is that everybody finds your opinion about something very quickly. And a lot of the um, traffic that you get on your blog um, comes from this search engines. And a lot of people don't know you. And so one of the things that happens when your blog becomes well known is that um, your, your pages, your articles end up become authoritative. Um, also because a lot of newspapers put their articles behind firewalls, behind registration, so they don't show up in the search results. A lot of the typical authoritative pages also aren't in the Google results. Mm -hmm. so, so what happens is that you, you start becoming very careful, which makes it a lot less fun to write. Because mm -hmm. um, on the one hand, you get influence, but on the other hand, um, every little thing that you make a mistake or everything that you say is, becomes political. And in some cases, it's very interesting. So when I wrote about the anti-Japan protests in China, I had Chinese and Koreans, and it got translated into Chinese, and it was discussed on the Chinese blogs, and it be, hundreds of comments in every day came in, and so that was really interesting. On the other hand, you know, if I you know write about something like, oh, I don't like this or I don't like that, I'll get people being offended, I'll get people disagreeing, and so lately, actually, I've started focusing more of my time on uh, more personal, another thing that we just product that we launched, which is more for sort of writing to friends and family and smaller communities so I can I can say silly things. Um, and also I've been working a lot on the um, community around this online games mm -hmm. um, like um, World of Warcraft because I think that this kind of guild and community, small community is also very interesting. Um, so it's, it's evolved. I still blog but not nearly as much as I used to. I used to write every morning when I woke up and just Set, wrote it, and then if I mis misspelled, I would go back and edit it. And I didn't think so much when I was posting. But now, because I know, you know, like I know a lot of famous people read it as well, so I'm always careful now when I write, which makes it a lot less fun. It makes it probably more like work than being a journalist. <laughs> well, I think Japan is um, slightly different. Um, Japan has had an online diary. Um, community much longer than um, just about anywhere else that I know. Actually, I think it was New York Times did an article very, very early about why is it that only Japanese have online diaries. Mm -hmm. This is because I think Ryuji Sakamoto and politicians were writing diaries and, as a form. Um, so that's, Japan has a history of that. Um, Japan also has a funny history of this kind of, they call it Nichan Neru, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of it's anonymous bulletin boards. And then also Japan has a slightly different demographic of people who write on the web compared to the United States. Um, I think it's slightly younger and probably, um, you know, my, my, it's changing, but my um, example is always if you go to United Airlines Business Class Lounge, everybody's sitting in front of their computers. If you go to Japan Airlines, um, everybody's drinking beer and reading the newspaper, mm -hmm. you know, and I think the literacy rate of the establishment in Japan for the web is, is lower, so this, it's a slightly different demographic. Um, I think in the United States it tended to be current events and news and politics oriented at the beginning. Um, whereas in Japan I think um, it's been kind of, you know, talento and um, entertainment, um, some food, travel, and um, has been more diary oriented. Um, it's slightly, it's changing slightly. I think some politicians are getting more involved in it. Um, also, Koriemon, uh, you know, took blog against this platform, so that definitely, for better or for worse, gave it a kind of image that it was a, um, kind of his, his um, fight against, struggle against establishment was you know, connected with blogging in Japan. Mm. Um, I think in the US, you know, the really well-known bloggers are people like, um, I think his name was Ken Seitz, there's a CNN um, reporter who was blogging from the front lines, and um, you know, a lot of the blogging in the United States was linked with 
a struggle against uh, mainstream um, journalism. Mm -hmm. So you know the bloggers often took on um, the mainstream journalists, um, like um, yeah, like the Dan Rather incident, yeah, where the bloggers would question the mainstream media. And it's it's interesting because if you you're asking about the impact of blogs, so if you took every single bar in the world where people sit around and watch TV and say, hey, that does, that sounds funny. Now, I, I was in the, so take the Dan Rather, I was in the military, and that's not how our memos usually look. But usually that would have ended there, in that, in that bar conversation. But if, now that they have the web, somebody writes it on, on the web and says, you know, that wasn't really how I remember our letters to look. And then somebody says, oh, that's interesting, let me take a look. And they do an analysis that shows that that document that Dan Rather showed was written using Microsoft Word, and not a typewriter that would have been used during that period. And so there's this forensic suddenly happens on the internet. And then it gets challenged and challenged and challenged until finally the mainstream media has to listen and react to it.